President Biden is heading to Atlanta, Georgia tomorrow for a speech on voting rights legislation. Biden and Vice President Harris will make an urgent call for the passage of federal voting rights laws, specifically two bills stalled by Senate Republican obstruction. Senate Democrats are expected to take up a bill by MLK Day to change Senate filibuster rules, which is currently opposed by two conservative Democrats who won't say what they actually will support. That's partly why some Georgia voting rights groups told the White House to stay away unless they have a plan to get the legislation over the finish line. A joint statement signed by several groups noted Georgia voters made history and made their voices heard, overcoming obstacles, threats and suppressive laws to deliver the White House and the U.S. Senate. In return, a visit has been forced on them, requiring them to accept political platitudes and repetitious, bland promises. Such an empty gesture without concrete action, without signs of real tangible work is unacceptable. And tonight, a coalition of groups who signed on to that statement, including Black Voters Matter, announced that they will be skipping President Biden's speech. And joining me now is Latasha Brown, co-founder of Black Voters Matter. And Latasha, my friend, this has been the subject of a lot of ch chatter on Twitter. Um, <laughs> but these groups are not going to attend. And it's not just Black Voters Matter. New Georgia Project Action Fund won't be there. Asian American Advocacy Fund. The Galio Impact Action Fund. These are groups that helped win the state uh, in 2021 uh, uh, in that in that special election and in 2020 aren't going to be there. Uh, tell me why. You know, it is not our goal to be combative or to be antagonistic. We are trying to send a message of how serious this is for us. That has been over a year. When we're looking at SB 202 and the kind of damage that it did in the state of Georgia, currently right now, many of the voters that supported and came out and voted in record numbers, we have less voting rights protection now than we did a year ago. And we're saying that is we're long past the time for just speeches. At this moment, what we want to see is we want to see a bill in hand. We want to see the bill signed. We want to, and we believe that there was a lot of goodwill. There was a lot of, of momentum that has been lost in the last year um, because the Democrats did not. We don't feel like this administration made this a priority. And so we're always welcoming. Yes, we welcome people to come uh, visit our state. We want the administration to be successful. But what we also is we have to really be able to hold each other accountable and this administration accountable. It is unconscionable that here we are a year later and we do not have voting rights legislation in place. And so that's the message that we're sending. We're sending the message of we're serious, that this is the moment right now that we're expecting some real, real deliverable. Now, and I should note that um, per uh, the great reporting uh, by Aaron Haynes at 19th News, Stacey Abrams will also not be there. She did tweet in support of the event. Uh, she said she had a conflict. Uh, it, interesting that she will not be there either. Um, and so when the president and the vice president come down, um, it, it doesn't appear that they have in place agreement by mansion and cinema um, to push through this legislation on the 17th. Um, and so there is a lot of pushback saying, well, what are they going to come and say? Uh, Ense Ufad, who you know very well, she got into a little bit with a lot of folks on social media who were like, well, what do you think the plan should be? And she's like, that's not my job. It's not my job to come up with the plan. And we want me to chew their food for them too. That's not it. You do the work. And so to answer that critique that people have is, you know, they're the executive branch. They can't make Mansion and Cinema do anything that they want them to do. What do you, how do you answer that? Well, you know, I think there's a couple of things. I think one, I think the president actually made a calculated mistake early on last year. I think at the end of the day, it was very clear that this was not a priority for him, that he, the way that he spoke about the infrastructure bill, he did not speak about the voting rights. You know, matter of fact, he said earlier on in one of his interviews, you know, that he was, would, will, once the bill came to his desk, that he would be willing to sign it. I've been saying this consistently, that we needed an LBJ moment. We needed him to get behind it and say unequivocally, we're going to have voting rights in this country, and I am supporting that and put the same kind of what I thought the fullness of his power of his office, he did not do that. And so as a result, here we find ourselves now. There are many that believe that the best use of time would be to be in the Senate, to be in D.C. and to actually rally the kind of support and the votes that we need. You know, I am hopeful that we're going to have voting rights legislation, but I think that this speaks to the frustration, you know, that people are feeling on the ground and groups that actually did the hard work and continue to be working hard right now to actually to just to listen to words, you know, we want real action. Just as every other American, you know, Americans vote for people not because they want speeches. What they want is they want results. We delivered, and I think that is very reasonable for us to expect that the Democrats would deliver as well and that this administration would deliver as well. 
And, you know, and, and I, I point out, for, and those who watch the show know, that our friend Joe Madison, who you and I both care a lot about, uh, I text with him <laughs> frequently because I'm worried about him. Um, he is on, what, 60-some-odd days of this hunger right. strike. Um, we just had another group of clergy and people who are civil rights leaders join and do a hunger strike. Well, he's on day 64. Um, there are two dozen faith leaders who've also joined in doing it, too. I mean, people are literally putting their lives on the line. What do you make of the fact that people's health risk. I mean, their lives are at risk. And this has not seemed to have moved Joe Manchin or cinema at all. You know, it's I, I, I have so many comments that I can say around that. You know, I think part of it is I think that Manchin has been lying all the while. You know, I think that he has never had real intentions to support this. But I also believe that there's a tremendous amount of power that goes with the administration. And part of the reason why we've actually been calling the carpet uh, the administration to the carpet on this is because we believe that the president does set the tone of the policy priorities. And so that we felt like, and we feel that that he did not set the tone early on enough around that voting rights was a priority, yet we find ourselves here. What we are expecting, we are expecting that this administration will deliver, that we will have federal voting rights legislation that will support the Americans in this country and that it will be a priority for this administration. Here, this is a president that was in the Senate for four decades, Joy, right? If there's anyone that I would expect to know how to navigate and maneuver through the Senate, it would be him, right? And so I think there's a expectation that they will deliver on these voting rights. I think that is entirely reasonable because you certainly cannot organize your way out of voter suppression uh, and the reversal of elections, which is the other thing they've made possible in the state of Georgia. Uh, Latasha Brown, thank you for doing all the work that you do and really appreciate you being here tonight.